everywhere. That's right. Welcome to this edition of Hope Healthy Living. I'm Hope. Welcome, co host. Hi, everyone. It's me, Pearl. And today we have another fantastic book review for you guys so you know what amazing books to look forward to in your library. So, yes. keep watching. Yes. So, we are going to talk about books. It's October. I want to say um, thank you to all our fans, right? Yes. We haven't posted a video for some time, but we are working on our craft. And without further ado, can we talk about our first book? This first book is called One Morning in Maine, written by Robert McClowski. Yes. This is an amazing book. It's kind of just talking about the life of someone um, who lives in Maine. Um, the not everyone, but like, do. yes, yes, and how their climate is, and just stuff like that. Like in this picture, we can already see that Maine probably is windy, yeah, because we can tell the grass is like um, blowing and the kids' hair is blowing. So if you are in a good um, observer, it's good to um, look at the pictures in the book. Um, because they always have a part of the story in them. I really like this book because when you open it, mm -hmm. you can see there is no color, just black, um, white, and some gray. Yes. And I really love the illustration. It just, just something about it is very old um, yes. fashion. Yes. And it's a really amazing book. And, and this book was published around 1950. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit of the story in this book? I know so, we're following uh, Sal and her little sister, Jane. Yes. So Sal and Jane, th these two little girls, are um, going to have a very fun day with their father, so mm -hmm. they get ready. And the older one, Sal, looks in the mirror and she um, is brushing her teeth and she noticed that one tooth is wiggly. Yes. Um, and she kind of freaks out because like nothing like this has ever happened to her. So she goes to her mom. Her mom just tells her, well honey, this happens all the time. It'll fall out eventually and then a new tooth will come out. Um, so then she kind of calms down. They go to town with their fathers to get groceries. Mm -hmm. And the way they get to town is very unusual for most people. Most people don't have to take a boat yes. to the nearest town. Usually they just drive or most people live in the town. So yes. it's very odd to see someone maybe um, Using riding in a boat yes. yeah, to get to town. And so, I, I love her throughout the book when she meets, you know, animals like seagulls, seals. She keeps asking them, you know, hey, uh, have you had a loose tooth or do yeah, you have teeth? Yeah, stuff like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when they get to town, they repair the motor because um, the boat is um, broken. So their father had to actually um, use like paddles yes. and, um, and roll the, the boat all the way to town. So yeah, they get that fixed, they get some groceries, and then they even get ice cream. Yes. Yum. So yeah. yeah, that's basically the end of the book. They go back home. So I definitely recommend this book, not only for the amazing story and the nice pictures, also, just to learn a little more about Maine yes. and to know, oh, well, if there's water, if they have to use a boat to get to town, there's probably going to be some big bodies of water near Maine. Yes. So, you can learn a thing or two through this book. Yes, great. So, our next one yes. is actually um, also... Um, written from the by same Robert author. McClowski. Yes. This one is called Time of Wonder, and I believe this one is also in Maine. Yes. 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 And um, one thing I forgot to address about these two books are they both have medals. Yes. So that means they are really good books. Yes. 
And so I actually prices. didn't read this book, so I'll hand it over yes. to Hope. Thank you. So this book, the subject matter again in this book is about, you know, childhood and capture the different activities through the seasons. So this book takes uh, them from uh, spring to uh, from winter to spring to summer and fall and you see how the family lives through these different seasons and it's really a wondrous journey because it brings you to your own life and even if you haven't lived in Maine but you can imagine things that you do throughout the season because we all have our life you know changed right so for us it's really around um, I would say holidays the way we celebrated when I was little I mean Easter will be a different holiday and then we always look forward to summer which was like our you know the schools are out so we have different activities and then after we go back to school around September we were looking forward to Christmas holidays so we have different activities and so this is really a time of wonder and if you are somebody looking for something to get your kids to know about men and various activities that they do this is a great book great okay so this next book is called um called captain beastles pirate party it is written by lucy coates yes. and illustrated by chris molds so this book is about this very very messy messy pirate mm -hmm. and his crew so they're pirates and they um this the captain's birthday is coming up very soon yes so they want to make him have an amazing birthday here's a picture mm -hmm. here so he's clearly very messy and his crew well they're very neat and they keep everything clean yes. so for a special birthday gift they want to get him an amazing birthday with lots of food and a new pirate outfit because obviously as you can tell his outfit's really dirty yes so they're going to give him a nice bath they're going to give him some nice grooming mm -hmm. and um do his beard and all that and they're going to give him a new suit. Yes. But when he's eating his birthday cake, <gasps> disaster struck. Yes. He drops some cake on his brand new outfit. And now he's back to being messy. Oh, no. So that is what this book is about. It's very um, nice, and what I can think of um, of this book is good for kids. Not really because like he's a pirate. I think this is a good book for kids because you know when he's messy, he was super grumpy, but when they cleaned him up, he was super happy. It's kind of like a motivator for kids yes. um, to take a bath or a shower. Yes, it's a great book that you can read around shower time, mm -hmm. right? Afterwards, you'll be clean and you'll be happy. So. Yes, and we are moving on to the next book. So this next book is called Crossing Bok Chito. Yes. Illustrated, I mean, written, written by Tim Tingle and illustrated by Jenny Roxix Bridges. So this book is about um, a boy who is um, a slave and this um, little girl who is um, a Native American. American. Mm -hmm. And there is this river which is separating two pieces of land. Yes. One side is a plantation um, with the slaves and the other side is Native American um, land. Yes. yes. And so this book is about the friendship between a little um, African-American boy 
and this girl um, who is a Native American who lives on the other side of the river. Yeah. Okay guys, welcome back and now I'm going to talk about the books that I read. And the first one is this book, Other Words for Home, written by Jasmine Barger. So this is a great book. I, it's a story of a Syrian refugee family. So this little girl, Jew, flees Syria to come to the United States with her mother. And so this book talks about her journey as she tried to find her footing in America. And we know that it's not easy when you're an immigrant because uh, she's coming, you know, she has her own culture, but she's coming into a different culture and she has to blend in, she has to find her place, she has to find her voice. She doesn't speak English when she comes, so learning, I mean, she barely speaks English, like how you would say, how are you, what's your name? But when she gets here, even just at the airport, the immigration uh, custom, the agent is asking, you know, real qu tough questions, and they have to answer, but they have documents that they could show and so the custom agent is able to figure out who they are uh, why are they visiting and all that great stuff but anyway i love this book because um i can see myself in this book you know trying to learn a new culture trying to learn a new way of life it's never easy. Yeah, and like trying to fit in in a new environment yes. is probably very um, new to her, very new to her. Yes, and yeah. I, I was telling you one of the references in this book when uh, the mother, you know, she's expecting a baby. So when they went to the hospital and they did the ultrasound and the nurse said, uh, would you like to know what you are having? And the mother spoke in Arabic to her, to Jude, it's like, aren't I having a baby? And it was just a little bit awkward because um, it's a different culture. She didn't reality. really understand what the nurse was saying. Same. Like, yes. uh, I know I'm having a baby. What yes. do you mean? What am I having? Yes. Am I having a basketball? No. But the nurse was trying to say, would you like to know if you're having a boy or yeah. a girl? So and it was just a huge misunderstanding. Yes, which happens a lot when you are actually learning a different language and learning customs and culture of that, you know, a new environment. Yeah. And I can relate with so many of those awkwardness myself when I came to America. So this is a great book. It's a fun book for teens because it's really a quest of identity but it's also a book about being tolerant being non-judgmental and also accepting differences so great pick and this second book flowing water falling flowers this is written by um, a chinese author i mean chinese american uh, her name is X H Collins. I don't remember exactly what the X and H stands for, but I was actually uh, privileged to be in one of the Zoom meetings where she was talking about the book. I just forgot the name. I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, but this is a great book because let me tell you, this book tells you about you know family uh, saga. So. She lost her job and she lost, you know, a dear friendship of hers. And now she has to, she decided to go on a trip to China with her mother. And along the way, she discovers so many secrets, you know, she unburies so many secrets in her family. And this spans through, I mean, some of these secrets has been. Uh, kept in the family for years. So this is a great book because it really tells you about, it gives you the insights about, you know, another person's life, culture, and really 
the sacrifices that people make and the choices that they make in life. So, a true book about life. So, great pick. And I couldn't recommend this enough because this is actually from a local area author. So, it was great to meet her and some of the places actually described in this book are places that are familiar even though it's fictional, you know, story based on true so uh but some of the places are very familiar when she described you know the things happening in illinois and so that was a great book and i finished reading it and i would recommend it to anybody who wants to know a little bit more about you know chinese culture great and the most interesting thing about this book too was that I could really see some similarities with my own culture in Cameroon, the Bamileke culture, the way we honor our dead. So this was a great book. Okay guys, now we have come at the end of this book review. I want to show you the books that I look forward to reading this month. Uh, the first one is Unbound by Tarana Book. These are adults books. And the second one, So Many Beginnings, written by Bethany C. Morrow. So this is another book that, you know, I hope I'll be able to read and love. So I, if you are looking for something to read, you know, in the coming months, especially with the cold weather setting in, this is also a book that I can recommend. And the third one is a French book. I don't have it here. I'm still ordering it. And the title is Le Cancer du Saint chez les Femmes Noires. It's written by Dr. Dominique Sigoko. I will be reading and commenting on the book in our next book review. This brings us to October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's why we are wearing pink, guys. And you know, I'm in my 40s, I have to do my first mammogram. So this is very important topic for me. And Envision Hope is a place to share, learn, inspire, and empower. And if we can read this book and inspire another person or empower someone else with, you know, the knowledge or the information, we would have done our part, right? So do you have anything to add before we finish? Um, to find these books, you might want to go to um, the section of the library and probably like the Aldo department um, for new books. Yes. Because as you can see, these are new. Go from these releases. books, yes, yes, they are new. Or you can go on Amazon and you would find any of the books that we mentioned today and you can purchase one for yourself. So great yes. and so. so we're going to say thank you for watching if you like this video make sure to like subscribe and share and click that notification bell down below so you know when we upload new videos every single time yes and we thank you for your support and if you are here watching this video for the first time you are welcome to this channel right so we're going to see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.